Hey everybody, uh, this is Bruce Muffson, LCSW from Las Vegas, uh, back again. Uh, I thought actually I was going to have to change my shirt today because I sweat like a pig and it's about 115 degrees outside today in Vegas, July 26th, actually June 26th, but I actually survived in my car with some air conditioning so I'm not drenched in sweat and I don't want to scare small children. Um, one of the cool things about doing these YouTube videos with uh, my man Rob in the corner is you get exposed to different kinds of things that you normally would not get exposed to. And today we're going to review a song by a young girl named Alisa Cara. And her name is A-L-E-S-S-I-A -S 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 Cara. And she hang out a song called Here, which I had seen and I want to, you know, we don't have a lot of money, but I did bring a prop today. So even though I am the age of 52, and here's what my prop is, dinosaur. So you see, dinosaur, dinosaur. Um, I still like listening to different kinds of music. And she came out this song called Here, which we liked, Rob and myself, because it was a different kind of music where usually a girl, young girl's like, oh, I can't wait to get excited and be with boys and get crazy and freaky and all, do all kinds of nutty things. And she's the, the ant antithesis of that. So I want, like we've done before with Kendrick, we're going to break this down for you people, young people, uh, and talk about feelings and being put in situations you're not, you're not really crazy about, how you can walk away from it, and also today about parents. You know, obviously it's a teen song, I get it. We're not here for like long lectures and lessons. But I want to just make some comments about parental roles because one of the things that Rob and I have noticed from doing 8,000 assessments is the lack of any awareness a lot of times of what kids are into and what they're doing. And in their own way, they're asking for... Hey, mom. Hey, dad. If they even have both parents today, uh, are you aware of what I'm doing? You know, can you rescue me? And actually, I read this. Uh, she did an interview on a radio station called Hot 97, of course, uh, with a young woman named Kim Lee. And she said that this party actually did take place when she was 16. She's now 18 years old. And she was having a terrible time. It wasn't her music. It wasn't her scene, so to speak. And in the end, her mom came and got her. So this is a true story. Now I want to break it down. And the song, by the way, is outstanding. Uh, great hooks, great music, very infectious. And the video is, I like the video as well. I'm actually a little jealous, to be honest. I'll tell you why. Because years ago, I wanted to do a video of me, you know, kind of doing what she did, going around the room when people were partying and doing crazy things. And I was going to point them out on a clinical level. And here, this young girl beat me to it. So once again, I want you people to realize, young people out there, if you see something that you think you can do, do it. Um, <laughs> she, I had the idea, but she clearly beat me to it. Um, another thing I liked also about her, which I want to share with people as well, what she did was at a very early age, she was posting stuff on YouTube because she said in this radio interview, she wanted to overcome her fear of shyness, uh, being able to speak in front of people, play in front of people, and she wanted to get a following. And I can't stress enough the need to do that today, to stand out, to be different, in a positive way, of course. But she did this. And here's what's interesting. I just want to quote it from the news article. She made enough clips that one clip was seen by the daughter of the founder of EP Entertainment, a production company with a joint venture with Universal Music Group. And they introduced her to the brother team of Kuya Productions and the songwriter. And boom. They got her a studio. So you never know who's watching what you produce. So be aggressive. Put that something out there. Don't be afraid to stand out from the crowd and let people know who you are. Because no one's going to know you better than yourself. And I give this girl a lot of credit. Even without this great song, it's impressive by itself what she accomplished on her own. All right, here we go into the song. You know, it's interesting because, we, like I said, we have done two Kendrick Lamar songs uh, prior and I like the mood, how it's set up. Uh, and Kendrick's, you know, it was the two vid videos that we, well, one video and, and two songs, I should really say. But the mood, you get like this eeriness about you. And in this situation, what she did was she layered it in, in, a, in a lens of purple. So you don't get the, you see the faces, you see what's actually taking place, but it's, it's filtered. You know, it, it, it's not 100%. There's not that clarity and a lot of times when I, when I talk to people, when I work with people who've made terrible choices in life, they'll say, 
I was out of control. I wasn't seeing things clearly. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't seeing things as they really were. And that's interesting. And, I, and she captured that well with the idea of using the purple as like a haze over all what's taking place. It's, the lyrics go like this. She goes, truly, I ain't got no business here. We're going to leave the English aspect alone. Any teachers out there listening, I apologize. But we're not going to discuss that today. But I got no business here. And when you walk into the party, when you're walking into the room, what do you see? Typical. Alcohol and drugs. No parents. Predictably, the puking, which leads to fighting. No one looks happy, and everyone is playing a role. And it's interesting how she kind of captured that, that, that emotion, because for so many kids today they feel they have to do what everyone else is doing. You know, I have to get crazy, I have to get wasted, I have to be experimenting with alcohol and drugs, my sexuality, you know, not to be a virgin by 18 because I'm a loser. But you see the cost of this. And the, and the video, and I'm not trying to get in it too deeply, it's just that you're so to enjoy, but the video was, was good about this. It captures everyone's face in the video, no one looks happy. That's what struck me the most watching this video. No one looks happy. Everyone's, you know, puffing. Everyone's glug, 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 glug. Okay? Everyone is like trying to wear something tight to impress the opposite sex. Everyone's in their little cliques. You see a guy being hoisted up. You see a guy, ooh, you know, hurling. You see a fight taking place. You see the cell phones coming out there to capture the event. No one looks happy. One of the things that has struck me working with kids, all the kids I've worked with, is not looking forward to stuff. It's like I gotta, I gotta follow the crowd. I gotta be exactly like everybody else, and that means if I gotta do something stupid, well, okay, you know, gotta do something stupid. And and I want you to think about that before you make those kinds of decisions. It was interesting to me because there was a study done of like twenty five thousand kids. North, South, East, and West, inner city, outer city, suburbs, rural, white, black, brown, yellow, even a couple of kids from Mars. And they said to them, what do you look for in parental supervision? And the comment came across the board, universal, male, female, everything, was we want somebody that we can go to to take the heat for us when we're about to do something that's dangerous. And what's the example? You're standing on a street corner, your buddies drive up, you got one guy in the front, two in the back, and the guy says, Bruce, hop in. Why? Just stole the car. I want to go joyriding. want to just, you know, enjoy the car. Now, you got your spidey sense tingling and it's saying to you, don't get in the car, this is going to only end up badly, but you don't want to look like a loser and a wuss, and people can be, oh, Bruce has no guts, you know, he won't do it with the crowd. So what do you want to be able to say? Man, I'd love to go. I'd love to hang out with you, but my dad would kick my butt if I'm in the car and I get caught. You guys have a great time, go enjoy, but I just can't do it. And generally what the kids want is that, that safety valve of having a, an involved parent. And the car just, okay, hey, oh, I know your father, oh, he's crazy. Yeah, boom, peel off, and you're like, Whew. you got someone to take the heat for you. That's a parent. Now, this party actually did take place for her, Alyssa, and uh, Alessia, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, and her mother came and got her, because she said, I was in this party, I felt totally out of control, not out of control, I felt uneasy, it wasn't my party. My mom went and got me. That's a credit to this young girl. And it's interesting that the only time she's actually smiling in the video is when she's she's laying down on the ground, there's like two other girls and they're sitting, you know, head to head, and the line is, I'd rather be with my somewhere with my people. We can kick it and just listen to some music with a message like we usually do. And we'll discuss our big dreams, how we plan to take over the planet. There's no pressure. I could just be a kid. I could be happy. I could be myself. And so many times today, because of the power of things like YouTube, of Facebook, of cell phones, of all the other 
I think Instagram, and then things change all the time, so I'm just, I don't even want to date myself, is you got to have that sense of, you know, can I just be me, or do I have to follow the crowd over and over and over again? Now again, Mr. Dinosaur, I brought this one of my kids because we don't have a lot of money for props, so we're just trying to make do, but you get the idea. Doing it from both angles, so you know what you're looking at. The, the point is, any parent that's watching this video, be involved. You know, what strikes me is that you got kids trying to be adults, and that always ends up as a disaster. You know, okay, what, what can we do to piss off our parents, make our parents upset? Okay, we'll smoke drugs, we'll do drugs, we'll drink, we'll get into a fight, we'll do something inappropriate, you know, with our bodies. We're the parents. You know, I have kids of my own, and God knows they've disappointed me plenty of times, um, but I try and be involved. I try and be aware of what's going on, who are they hanging out with, who are they with. She had the confidence to call her mom two years ago and say, please come get me. And I've bailed my kids out of things. Oh, my dad's coming, my dad's coming, well, my mom's coming. A lot of kids today come from divorced homes. But where are you as a parent? Do you really know what your kid is doing? Would you want your kid in that situation? Now, some of the comments were interesting from this song, whereas one of the comments was how a guy rescued a girl who was being grinded on at a party. Guy just said, hey, come here. Not everyone's so eager to dance with you or to smoke weed with you or to get drunk with you or to get poured on by you. Yeah, you know, some people just don't want to do that. And then you're in that situation, how do I fit in? How do I be myself? And, you know, it's interesting, again, and towards the end of the video, you know, she's walking towards her car, and what do you get? You get two guys having a fight, and they're like this. They're both, you know, both ready to throw punches. One guy's on the ground. And what's coming out? The cell phone. I'm living life through someone else. I'm living life through two guys getting bloody. What does that say about you? You know, where are you as a person? I, you don't see anyone walking in to stop the fight. It's like, oh, they're squaring up. Get out those phones, because that's the next post on my Facebook account. You know, ooh, oh, one guy got knocked out. Yeah, way to go. One guy got his nose busted. Oh, look at all the blood. But where's the people stepping in and saying, what are you doing? Now, again, I am a dinosaur. I'm not going to go back to the visual because you've seen the green dinosaur already. By the way, it is a T-Rex, so very popular for my kids. But where's the stand-upness of people to look out for other people? Was I in fights as a kid? Plenty. Were my friends in fights as a kid? Plenty. But I tried to look out for my friends, and they shouldn't look stupid. They shouldn't be embarrassed. They shouldn't be humiliated. And when you're involved in a situation where there's no kind of adult awareness, only disaster is going to happen. And one of the things that Rob and I have experienced from doing all those assessments and all kinds of houses was that we would come into certain houses and it's like, damn, is there a parent here? Well, we're talking to a parent, but Really, we're not. We're talking to a child. And we would hear things like babies crying, kids crying, or, you know, a toy falls on the ground. They were like, you're going to, Mom, you're going to pick it up? You know, do something? Up. Oblivious. And several times, I was at Rob. This happened more than once. I would pick a kid up. Put on my lap, rock it, play with a car. Can I change a diaper? Are you that dense? You don't know your kid's got a leaky diaper? Are kids uncomfortable? You know, we're talking to the kid. Oh, you know, rum, 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 rum. Not even the kid that we were talking to, no, not even the kid that we were seeing, but we were providing, acting like an adult. Well, we've been in houses where World War III broke out. People are throwing punches. 
Hey, man, you can't do that. Grabbing a kid, grabbing another kid. Can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. There's no parental awareness. And for me, looking at all these kids in the room that she's, you know, have, trying to have a good time with, they're all, all backgrounds, all ethnic types, all skin color. Big deal. That's not even news anymore. But you get the sense there's no one around looking out for these people, looking out for their best interests. And she makes that comment. You know, I mean, I know you mean only the best and your intentions aren't to bother me. But, you know, you realize, like, you know, you're not really here. Not people who don't even care about my well-being. Don't even care about my well-being, who I am as a person. Now, I'm going to close with this because, I, again, I am a parent. I have several children. I get it. You know, are you, are you active? You know, in so many homes we've gone into, like, the parenting was really the cause of the problem. The oblivious. Couldn't parent themselves. Couldn't parent their kids. And the kids are lost. And we, sometimes we, do, we talk to kids. We're talking to the parent. And the kid is really the adult in the house. Eerie, 10-year-old girl, brighter than the mom. You know, 12-year-old boy, he's more bright. He's brighter than both parents put, well, mom and her loser boyfriend of the month club membership that she has. Brighter. And we're like, something's wrong here. You're supposed to be this? Nothing wrong with the kid. And I, I just like, I just like the, you know, the way she, you know, she's looking at the different cliques, the different groups of people that party up or, you know, get together, the haters and, and, you know, the angry ones. No one's happy. It seems like everyone's running on that wheel and no one's getting it. And that's the kind of thing I really want you to focus on and think about if you're a teenage kid. And also, what is your role? And it's okay to be different. It's okay not to have to follow the party line and do what everyone else does. I just like this, I'm just going to quote this last comment that she made. Um, she recreated the party, recruiting many of the people actually there to reprise their roles. The twist, all these people were frozen, and Kara moves freely about them. The attention, she said, is finally on the person who's in the corner. Great. And I give you a lot of credit for, for speaking out, for talking about this, and it's a great song that you're, you're giving credence and, and, and credibility to those people that do have these issues, that are not like, you know, social and party animals, that can be wallflowers. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay to be different, it's okay not wanting to be like everybody else, all the power to you. So we're gonna close with this, just wanna say again, great song, great message, great meaning, not got more songs like this, it's perfect, and yes, I'm a dinosaur, but I get it. Great job. Guys, have a great one.